Now let us listen to the lesson number one, the lost child, from page number one to six. The author is Mukhraj Anand. Introduction. A child goes to a fair with his parents. He is happy and excited, and wants the sweets and toys displayed there. But his parents don't buy them for him. Why then does he refuse when someone else offers them to him? Let us listen to the lost child. It was the festival of spring. From the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity. Some walked, some rode on horses, others sat, being carried in bamboo and bullock carts. One little boy ran between his father's legs, brimming over with life and laughter. Come, child, come," called his parents, as he lagged behind, fascinated by the toys in the shops that lined the way. He hurried towards his parents, his feet obedient to their call, his eyes still lingering on the receding toys. As he came to where they had stopped to wait for him, he could not suppress the desire. Of his heart, even though he well knew the old, cold stare of refusal in their eyes. I want that toy," he pleaded. His father looked at him, red-eyed, in his familiar Terence way. His mother, melted by the free spirit of the day, was tender, and. Giving him her finger to hold, said, "Look, child, what is before you?" It was a flowering mustard field, pale like melting gold, as it swept across miles and miles of even land. A group of dragonflies were bustling about on their gaudy purple wings, intercepting. The flight of a lone black bee, or butterfly, in search of sweetness from the flowers. The child followed them in the air with his gaze, till one of them would still its wings and rest, and he would try to catch it. But it would go fluttering, flapping, up into the air. When he had almost caught it in his hands, then his mother gave a cautionary call, "Come, child, come, come on to the footpath." He ran towards his parents gaily, and walked abreast of them for a while, being, however, soon left behind, attracted by the little insects and worms. Along the footpaths, that were teeming out from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine. Come, child, come! His parents called from the shade of a grove, where they had seated themselves on the edge of a well. He ran towards them. A shower of young flowers fell upon the child. As he entered the grove, and forgetting his parents, he began to gather the raining petals in his hands. But lo, he heard the cooing of doves and ran towards his parents, shouting, "The dove, the dove!" The raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands. Come, child, come! They called to the child. Who had now gone running in wild capers round the banyan tree, and gathering him up, they took the narrow, winding footpath, which led to the fair through the mustard fields. As they neared the village, 
द चाइल्ड कुड सी मैनी अदर फूटपाथ्स फुल ऑफ थ्रॉन्ग्स कन्वर्जिंग टू द वर्ल पूल ऑफ द फेयर एंड फेल्ड एट वंस रिपेल्ड एंड फैसिनेटेड बाय द कन्फ्यूजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ही वॉज एंटरिंग अ स्वीट मीट सेलर हॉक्ड गुलाब जामुन रसगुल्ला बर्फी जलेबी एट द कॉर्नर ऑफ द एंट्रेंस एंड अ क्राउड प्रेस्ड राउंड हिस काउंटर एट द फूट ऑफ एन आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ मेनी कलर्ड स्वीट्स डेकोरेटेड विथ लीव्स ऑफ सिल्वर एंड गोल्ड द चाइल्ड स्टेड ओपन आइड एंड हिज माउथ वॉटर्ड फॉर द बर्फी दैट वॉज हिज फेवरेट स्वीट I want that burfi he slowly murmured but he half knew as he begged that his plea would not be heeded because his parents would say he was greedy so without waiting for an answer he moved on a flower seller hawked a garland of gulmohar a garland of gulmohar the child seemed irresistibly drawn he went towards the basket where the flowers lay heaped and half murmured i want that garland but he well knew his parents would refuse to buy him those flowers because they would say that they were cheap so without waiting for an answer he moved on a man stood holding a pole with yellow red green and purple balloons flying from it the child was simply carried away by the rainbow glory of their silken colors and he was filled with an overwhelming desire to possess them all but he well knew his parents would never buy him the balloons because they would say he was too old to play with such toys so he walked on farther a snake charmer stood playing a flute to a snake which coiled itself in a basket its head raised in a graceful bend like the neck of a swan while the music stole into its invisible ears like the gentle ripping of an invisible waterfall the child went towards the snake charmer but knowing His parents had forbidden him to hear such coarse music as the snake charmer played. He proceeded farther. There was a roundabout in full swing. Men, women, and children carried away in a whirling motion, shrieked, and cried with dizzy laughter. The child watched them intently, and then. he made a bold request i want to go on the roundabout please father mother there was no reply he turned to look at his parents they were not there ahead of him he turned to look on either side they were not there he looked behind there was no sign of them a full deep cry rose within his dry throat and with a sudden jerk of his body he ran from where he stood crying in real fear mother father tears rolled down from his eyes hot and fierce his flushed face was convulsed with fear panic stricken he ran to one side first then to the other hither and thither in all directions knowing not where to go mother father he wailed his yellow turban came untied and his clothes became muddy having run to and fro in a rage of running for a while he stood defeated his cries suppressed into sobs at little distances on the green grass he could see 
through his filmy eyes men and women talking he tried to look intently among the patches of bright yellow clothes but there was no sign of his father and mother among these people who seemed to laugh and talk just for the sake of laughing and talking he ran quickly again this time to a shrine to which people seemed to be crowding every little inch of space here was congested with men but he ran through people's legs his little sob lingering mother father near the entrance to the temple however the crowd became very thick men jostled each other heavy men with flashing murderous eyes and hefty shoulders the poor child struggled to thrust away between their feet but knocked to and fro by their brutal movements he might have been trampled underfoot had he not shrieked at the highest pitch of his voice father mother a man in the surging crowd heard his cry and stooping with great difficulty lifted him up in his arms how did you get here child whose baby are you the man asked as he steered clear of the mass the child wept more bitterly than ever now and only cried i want my mother i want my father the man tried to soothe him by taking him to the roundabout will you have a ride on the horse he gently asked as he approached the ring the child's throat tore into a thousand shrill sobs and he only shouted i want my mother i want my father the man headed towards the place where the snake charmer still played on the flute to the swaying cobra listen to that nice music child he pleaded but the child shut his ears with his fingers and shouted his double pitched strain i want my mother i want my father the man took him near the balloons thinking the bright colors of the balloons would distract the child's attention and quieten him would you like a rainbow colored balloon he persuasively asked the child turned his eyes from the flying balloons and just sobbed i want my mother i want my father the man still trying to make the child happy bore him to the gate where the flower seller sat look can you smell those nice flowers child would you like a garland to put round your neck the child turned his nose away from the basket and reiterated his sob i want my mother i want my father thinking to humor his disconsolate charge by a gift of sweets the man took him to the counter of the sweet shop what sweets would you like child he asked the child turned his face from the sweet shop and only sobbed i want my mother i want my father think about it one what are the things the child sees on his way to the fair why does he lag behind two in the fair he wants many things what are they why does he move on without waiting for an answer three when does he realize that he has lost his way how have his anxiety and insecurity been described four 
Why does the lost child lose interest in the things that he had wanted earlier? 5. What do you think happens in the end? Does the child find his parents? Talk about it. How to ensure not to get lost? Suggested reading The Coolie by Murk Raj Anand Kabuliwala by Rabindranath Tagore